Hello, this is John Reddy from the Echo Foundation in Charlotte, North Carolina, and today we will be having a conversation with Daniel and Nora. So, Daniel and Nora, tell us a little bit about yourselves. So, I'm Nora. I'm from Spain. I live in Madrid, the capital, and I'm a junior in high school. I am Daniel. I'm 13 years old. I'm in eighth, eighth grade, and I live in Madrid, too. So obviously this last month has been very different for everyone across the world. And as you know, many countries have had to take action to stop the spread of COVID-19. So specifically, what is being done in Spain to stop the spread of the virus? So at first, the principal measure was just to shut everything down. Everybody stay in their homes, just uh, doctors and basic people, they could go to work, but the rest, everybody that was not needed, they had to stay home, uh, quarantine basically, and to avoid the virus spreading. Yeah. So it has it changed now because it's been, um, you know, a couple months, and I know in the United States, some regulations have been they've come off. So has it changed in Spain at all? Uh, Yeah. Actually, before, we couldn't even go out for doing sport. But now there has been some hour restrictions. And for example, kids go from 12 a.m. to 7 p.m. and adults the rest of the time. Oh, okay. Wow. So you were able to go outside and play sports and do things like that and get activity? Yeah. Yeah. As, as oh, long as it's supposedly individually. Yeah. But people are not really yeah. doing. Yeah. It must be hard. So speaking of about that with sports, you know, how is it different because of the coronavirus and, you know, being outside, does it feel different? So now it feels very different because – what before you you took for granted, like you could cross paths with someone running or or stuff. You now have to be very careful to keep always five feet apart. So you do sports, but you can't you can't actually just focus on doing them. You have to be yeah. the whole time aware or where the rest of the people around you are. Yeah. Um. So it's going to challenges that you guys have found. That's one challenge. What? Or some other challenges that you found because of this pandemic? For example, living four people in a house that's quite small and dealing with our daily routine, especially having just one computer for everybody to do our homework, that's been very challenging. And just the daily routine, total change, that's been a lot to do with. Have you seen any benefits from being quarantined in your home? Well, I think uh, we're being more organized because before you had, you know, you had a timetable, but sometimes you didn't have enough time to do some things. And now you have to actually. Have you guys picked up any new uh, skills or like any new activities because you're stuck in your home? I redecorated my entire room. So I think now I can go as room interior decorator easily. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, so going to school, you guys are both in school and you talked about how you only have one computer. So before, what did a normal school day look like before the pandemic hit your country? Uh, well, we went to school at... 8.15 and then we took our classes, uh, the break with friends and yeah, that was it actually. Pretty simple. So now what does it look like? It's all, you're all at home. So what does it look like now? So now it looks, you have like a schedule that the school provides where you have assigned certain things for certain times, which has been actually just been done the last month before it was very chaotic every teacher had yeah. its own method but now they have actually kind of put a timetable to do it some teachers um, put a uh, video calls into that timetable and just have to hand in assignments every week yeah 
Um, so what are some specific activities that you just find yourself doing very often because you're in your home all the time? Well, uh, watching TV shows and movies like all the time. <laughs> yeah. Binge watching. Do you guys have like Netflix or any of those streaming services? Yeah, we do. And we are constantly just looking at new shows or films. Yeah. To watch. Yeah. So how do you think COVID-19 has affected your physical and mental health? So physically, I think since you have the whole day for yourself, we personally, I think, have been a little bit more active, like forcing Good. ourselves to do every day a little bit of uh, or dancing or sports. Not very intense, maybe, but just keep moving a little bit. And mentally, you just are a lot with yourself in your head. So it's a little bit, you have time to think about your life and it can go for the better but also for the worse yeah yeah I do find myself thinking a lot and you've got a lot of time to yourself so talking like it's you know it's obviously very hard to communicate with other people right now and you really can't get in close contact so how have you stayed in contact with other friends and family uh, with our family we have been doing WhatsApp video calls, like, yeah. almost every day to keep yeah. track. And with our friends, sometimes we call, but we have been texting. Yeah. So do you guys feel, is it is it hard not being able to talk to your, your friends and not being able to even see your family in person? At first it was, but now I think you kind of get used to this new way of communication. I think mm -hmm. maybe the part of getting hacks and just the inside jokes you usually have with people, that's like the hardest part. Yeah. But since you are the whole time on the internet, I think we have kind of adapted to that. Yeah. So are you guys worried about going back to normal life? Because life has changed so much over these months and you've adapted to it. What do you think it's going to be like going back into to normal life? Yeah, I think until, I mean, there is no going to be a normal life again because yep. you have to keep distances and all that stuff. So, well, I think it, it isn't going to be the same. It's not going to be the same, yeah. Well, this has been a great interview, and you guys have got some great things to say, and I'm glad I was able to talk to you guys. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Echo Foundation was created by Nobel Peace Laureate Ellie Wiesel and family therapist Stephanie Onsaldo to promote justice, tolerance, and humanity at home and abroad. Based in Charlotte, North Carolina, ECHO enlists notable humanitarians to inspire the next generation of humanitarians through student-led initiatives. For more information about the ECHO Foundation, visit www.echofoundation.org or follow our Facebook and Instagram pages.